livestock fermentations can be identified by several signs, a thick mix, lasting cloudiness, an unprocessed honey taste, too much sweetness, stuck fermentations and meat making. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm diving into a critical topic for mead makers, stuck fermentations. Before I dive into the details, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support helps me bring more awesome mead making content to you. Now, let me share my personal approach to ensuring successful fermentation. I generally use high pH water between eight to 9.5 pH, which I get at the water store I build myself. This helps me maintain a stable pH level in the must. I use dry yeast. I rehydrate it with gopherm prior to pitching the yeast into the must. This helps ensure that the yeast is active and ready to ferment. I follow a four-step nutrient addition schedule using Fermate O to feed the yeast throughout the entire fermentation process. I mix my meat must well using a wine whip attached to a drill, ensuring that all ingredients are thoroughly combined. I use an oxygen wand attached to an oxygen tank to oxygenate the must. This provides the yeast with the oxygen they need to thrive. I degas the must twice a day and release excess CO2 to prevent stress on the yeast. I check my pH daily to ensure that it stays above 3.8, providing an optimal environment for fermentation. I also check my specific gravity with a hydrometer to ensure that the gravity is decreasing as the sugar is converted into alcohol, helping me monitor the progress and detect that the fermentation is stuck. Now, Let's dive into what stuck fermentation is, how to identify it, and most importantly, how to prevent and fix it, and insufficient alcohol. Restarting a stuck fermentation can be challenging, which is why it's essential to maintain perfect fermentation conditions from the beginning. One common cause of stuck fermentation is not enough active yeast or damaging it before its use. This can happen if you don't rehydrate the yeast properly or you add it directly to the must. Using the wrong chemicals too soon or ingredients with preservatives can also hinder the yeast activity. Maintaining the correct pH range is crucial. A pH below 3.2 can occur naturally with acidic fruits or by misusing acid blends and potassium. Honey alone doesn't provide all the nutrients yeast need, such as nitrogen, vitamins, and minerals. Any nutrients at the wrong time or not at all can leave the yeast hungry. While too many nutrients can overwhelm them, raise the temperature, and cause off flavors. Yeast also needs enough oxygen and suitable temperature to grow. Without enough oxygen, fermentation slows down and extreme temperatures can halt or harm the yeast. Excess CO2 can stress the yeast and poor mixing of the musk can lead to uneven fermentation environments. High gravity fermentations due to high honey content can further stress the yeast. To improve fermentation and solve any issues, Consider these steps. Warm the fermentation area by five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit to suit the yeast needs. Yeast is more active in warmer temperatures, but avoid going too high to prevent off flavors. Adjust the mead must pH to 3.8 with potassium bicarbonate or potassium carbonate for optimal conditions. Maintaining a balanced pH ensures a healthy environment for yeast. Add the correct amount of nutrients, specifically 1.25 grams per gallon of Fermate O to feed the yeast. Yeast needs nitrogen, vitamins, and minerals to thrive. Adding these nutrients at the right time, specifically in stages, supports healthy fermentation. Aerate and degas the must to prevent CO2 buildup and ensure thorough mixing. Oxygen is crucial for yeast growth, especially in the early stages. Use an aeration stone or stir vigorously. For fruit meads, stir and break up the fruit layer. This ensures an even fermentation and prevents fruit from creating barriers that can hinder yeast activity. Monitor the process by measuring specific gravity and checking alcohol and sugar levels. Regular monitoring helps you catch issues early. Introduce oxygen early to avoid spoiling the mead with late oxidation. Oxygenating the must in the initial stages supports yeast health, but avoid introducing oxygen later in the process as it can cause oxidation. If fermentation doesn't restart, use fresh yeast. Rehydrate it with GoFirm and prepare the starter with a light honey nutrient mixture. Gradually increase the starter with must and nutrients before blending it back into the original must. 
This step-by-step -step approach helps acclimate the yeast to the must conditions. In addition to these steps, it's important to address other potential fermentation issues. If fermentation doesn't start at all, ensure you used a viable starter and supplied enough nutrients. If these conditions are met, the issue could be due to overly high gravity, a pH too low for the yeast, or the presence of sanitizers, preservatives, or substances that harm yeast. For slow fermentations, the cause is likely a lack of nutrients. Adding nutrients and oxygen, then aerating and degassing can help. Always verify that the pH isn't too low. By understanding the causes and solutions for stuck fermentations and implementing these best practices, you can ensure a successful mead making process. Proper temperature control, pH balance, nutrient additions, oxygenation, and the potential need for fresh yeast are all critical components in addressing and preventing stuck fermentation. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Click on the detailed video linked here in the description below. You can also find more information in the comments section. Don't forget, please like and subscribe. Your support helps me bring more awesome mead making content to you. Happy mead making!